I'm Nadi Ramagan, and this is a AAAS podcast. The pap smear first showed up in doctors' offices in the 1950s and has proved to be an effective way to spot cancerous cells in the cervix. So currently, if a woman wants to be screened for cervical cancer, a pap smear will be collected from her uh, by her physician. Now, traditional pap smear testing relies on cytology, and what that means is that the pathologist will be looking for microscopically visible changes that are specific or suggest that a cancer is present. A newer test tests just for the presence of HPV DNA. Now, these tests can be used uh, separately. These, these tests can be done separately or, can, or in conjunction with each other. Uh, but the key point here is that the woman is going to get one pap smear collected, you know, per year. And these tests are both done on the same pap smear specimen. Now, the test we describe in our paper also uses the same pap smear specimen, but now we're looking for the DNA, cancer DNA specific mutations that give us an idea that the patient has a cancer. So we, we take the same pap smear and just extend its use further. Now, some people might say 40% isn't a very high percentage. Could you talk a little bit more about that? Absolutely. We were very excited to detect all of the endometrial cases that we tested. And I think what's important to point out is that many of those cases were of at the earliest stages. Yes, the, the, the simple answer is geography. Uh, the uterus is very close to the cervix. So when cells are shed from the tumor, they have a very small distance to travel to be collected in the cervix. The majority of uterine tumors shed cells that are readily detectable by our test uh, in the cervix. The ovary has a lot farther to go. Uh, Tumors in the ovary, uh, the cells would have to be shed they would have to traverse through the fallopian tube and then, uh, then remain intact into the cervix. Now, we looked at both the cells that collected in the cervix as well as any DNA that may have been cell-free in the cervix as well, and we found the same percentage of positive results. Now, I think that women would, would still benefit from such a test for ovarian cancer because if you were one of those 40%, obviously this would be a very informative test. Uh, if you're one of the 60% that, you, that we miss, that's something that we want to improve uh, using a variety of different approaches, but really still, we're still in the investigative stage. We might be able to look at more genes. We might be able to apply different uh, cervical sampling techniques, or we may simply be able to test at different times of the menstrual cycle. All these uh, possibilities are being explored right now.